Well, viewer discretion is advised. I think you can safely argue that if you decide to click on a video titled Mortal Kombat, you yourself carry a certain amount of responsibility. Hello and welcome to a look at Mortal Kombat for the Amiga, a game that was released by Virgin and is originally an arcade made by Midway. The story of the arcade Mortal Kombat was that Midway designed it to counter the popularity of Street Fighter 2 World Warrior and of course uh, they designed a game that was rather controversial for its graphical nature and uh, people were arguing that the only reason it had said graphical nature was to intentionally be controversial in order to draw the attention of people. The game is heavily inspired by the film Bloodsport featuring a short clone Claude Van Damme and Midway apparently tried to get Sean Claude Van Damme for this game, but uh, for various reasons, whatever the case, didn't get him and put in a Johnny Cage instead, which is basically reflecting Sean Claude Van Damme's character okay. in the film Bloodsport. Now, the plot of Mortal Kombat depends on where you see it from, because the different characters you can select have their own reasons for entering the Mortal Kombat tournament. And it could be revenge, it could be liking to hurt people, it could be saving the world, whatever the case may be. But they all have their own um, investment okay. in joining this uh, tournament. And, of course, as you can probably gather, it is a fighter versus fighter. Beat the crap out of each other until one of you stops moving. Or, in the case of Mortal Kombat, until one of you lose all your limbs, get set on fire, get blown up, get thrown into a pit of spikes, whatever the case may be. And then, of course, once you get through a certain amount of fighters, you will have to face endurance fights, which is more than one fight at a time, and then you will face the two bad guys in order. And ultimately, once all that is done, you can consider yourself to be amazingly great, or whatever it is that you want to consider yourself to be. I don't mind. What made the arcade stand out at the time, of course, was uh, the use of digitized graphics and the generous helpings of blood and violence that was not necessarily common for fighting games or games in general at that time. Does it hurt? Oh, it looks painful. Showcasing the lovely game over screen. Why they bother tying up a corpse, I don't know. Whatever. The Amiga version features a certain amount of options you can tamper with and um, just to get some sort of idea of how the game would perform at the easiest setting compared to the hardest difficulty setting, I did a game with both and uh, my conclusion as far as I could uh, get a feel for was that one very easy, the opponent wasn't overly keen on using special moves and all that kind of stuff and was a bit more passive, but by and large the game's difficulty didn't change an awful lot as a whole. The difference between easy and medium wasn't actually that um, 
big compared to what I may have expected. I'm more or less expected to walk through the game playing on very easy, but that turned out not to be the case. Speaking of, by the way, I am fully aware that in these video clips I play like a complete amateur and there is a very good reason for that which I will get back to towards the end of the video. Let's squeeze in the technical aspects while we have a chance. Graphically, compared to the arcade uh, original, the Amiga version actually doesn't look too bad. There's some animations missing, and the characters are somewhat smaller than in the arcade original, but by and large, it is fairly accurate. From a sound point of view, the music, I find the Amiga version's music to be slightly better than the arcade, which of course is up for debate, but the sound effects themselves are more or less li uh, lifted whole cloth from the arcade original, so the sounds of punches and hits and speech and all that stuff is fairly accurate. While we finish off getting uh, mauled by Sub-Zero, we can take a look at the very hard difficulty level and it was a complete coincidence that I decided to go with this character, it wasn't in reference to what I was talking about earlier, but uh, Johnny Cage up against uh, Kano and um, things changes significantly on very hard. First and foremost, special moves are coming in fast and furious and there's a certain amount of input reading going on. I wouldn't say it's excessive, but it's definitely present and uh, playing the game on very hard unless you have quite a few hours put into it is not going to be overly exciting. You are going to get crushed and it's not going to be fun at all. Well, on the surface, everything looks fine and dandy as a conversion. The Amiga version of this game suffers from two fatal flaws. First and foremost, the control scheme. We are talking about a game that was meant for 5-6 buttons being converted to a one-button control scheme. It's bound to give issues, and it is giving issues. Because, of course, like many games with a similar nature, your punches and kicks are determined by distance in order to give you more options available. Which of course means that um, if you intentionally do a certain move and the opponent moves closer, then the game will say, Aha, you are trying to do this move instead and change what you're doing, so you're doing something differently. And neither your original intended attack nor the replaced attack will actually connect, making you look like a complete idiot. Now, the controls being what they are, if you play enough games, you'll likely get used to it, so it's something you can manage. But the other flaw of this version, which is far more serious, is the excessive load times involved with playing this game. A digitized graphics may or may not be your thing, either you're going to think it's super cool or you think it's going to be super meh. But the file sizes required for set graphics and sites are quite large, meaning that between fights you have a load time of about a minute and 30 seconds, which is bad enough. But if you game over, the time it takes from you are on the game over screen to your back in actual fighting it is about 3 minutes 15 to 3 minutes 20 which is completely and utterly unacceptable, which is also why my gameplay in this video is not particularly interesting or great, because I didn't feel like playing a game for 20 minutes when 14 of set 20 minutes consists of looting. On a single drive, this game is a nightmare, an absolute nightmare. Now, based on my thumbnail, the definition of the word gimmick is something that you add to something else in hope that it will stand out. A gimmick may in and by itself not be anything special. You could argue that the digitized graphics and violence in this game are features. 
But without the digitized graphics and the violence, the game doesn't stand out in any way, shape or form. So in that regard, the features ultimately are gimmicks. As an arcade conversion, it's definitely not bad, but the load times involved makes it completely, for me at least, undesirable to play and try to get good at. On that note, thanks for watching, take care, see you next time, bye bye for now.